So Harry, um, it's only a couple of weeks uh, now, or quite a few weeks since the World Cup. What a period of time you've had. Firstly, the World Cup, which was an incredible experience, uh, certainly from the outside, must have been as a player. And now you call yourself a Premier League player. I mean, have you digested any of that yet? Yeah, I mean, it probably couldn't have gone as, as much better as it has done, to be fair. Obviously, you know, the World Cup was an incredible experience. Um, I think of obviously the, the results that we got and just the whole feel and I think the team created for not just like football itself but the whole country as well. Um, and obviously to come to come back from the World Cup and straight into to Stoke, um, you know, playing five or six games and then to get this move, mate, it's, um, yeah, it's a dream come true really. How did it come about? Did you hear about it in advance? Was it something that rumbled on for a while? I mean, I heard a little bit of noise, obviously, start of January. Um, I kind of knew it was in the pipeline a little bit, but obviously, like I said to the manager at Stoke, I said, listen, I don't really, unless there's concrete um, you know, interest and there's a bid made, then I just want to get on with my football and, and play as much as I can. Um, so it wasn't until the kind of bid came in. Um, obviously, we had good discussions with the club and it was an opportunity that I couldn't turn down, you know, to play Premier League football, to play for a club at Leicester. Obviously, you've seen the facilities for yourself. Everything's there for you to do well, you know, there's there's no excuses. Um, and yeah, I just, you know, couldn't wait to to, to get here and get started really. You look a very excited boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <I'm laughs> never stopped smiling since I got here. Excellent. Was it always your dream to play in the Premier League? Did you watch the Premier League growing up as a kid? Or, more probably, I think more likely the case, you were indoctrinated as a kid and you wanted to play in the Scottish Premiership? You know what, it's, it's a bit of both, obviously it's my dream to, to, to play in the Premier League. I think if you ask any kid at any age, they want to play at the highest level of football. Um, the Premier League's the, the most you know, shown league on TV, so it was always on the TV. Always watching it, you know, I remember, um, you know, Man United's Liverpool, you know, your, your old top fours, that, as I like to say, that we used to watch all the time. And and yeah, obviously to, to know the move was was there or the chance chance to happen. Um, yeah, like you said, it was a dream come true. Should we go and have a look around the yeah. place? Yeah. How long have you got? Because it's a big building. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, you were 17 years old when Leicester won the Premier League title back in 15-16. What are your memories of that moment? Um, quite a lot to be fair, I think. Obviously, to start off the league, obviously they just kept winning. And it was, I think everyone was, was thinking or saying, how long can they keep it up for? And it just felt like every week they did. Um, Don't worry, we were saying that in the dressing room as well. Yeah. How long can this go on for? <laughs> I remember the I remember the, the game against Man City away was the big one on, on Sky and it was like if they, if they win here then they've got a right chance and I think it was a 3-0 game where they just absolutely... It was 3-1 or something like that. I think just, yeah. just absolutely battered them. Yeah. I thought, yeah, 100%. There was another game, I just remember for some reason, I think it was away at Sunderland and I think uh, Vardy scored 1-0 on the breakaway. I think that was like, I don't think they played well that day but that was another one and it's like, well, we're still not playing well but we're winning um, and yeah they just kept on winning and winning and winning and then obviously eventually it turned into one of the, the biggest fairy tales in sporting history really. It was because it was that moment of time when obviously it was against all the odds 5,000 to 1 which was well documented and it was a team that just avoided relegation the year before and then win the league and it catapults the club and sets the foundations to what this club is like today. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you feel that, right, when you walk in the door? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, it's, it's well documented and the, the, the success that the club's had, obviously, with a few trophies with the FA Cup and Community Shield alongside the last um, previous years. But I think everything's geared towards Leicester being, being a top Premier League side. Um, I think that's what we're all striving for. Um, and yeah, obviously, like you said, the, that league campaign definitely laid the foundations for it. When you, when you think about um, Leicester as a, a, you know, playing in the Premier League, making that debut, when I remember back when I was a young kid, when I first made out playing in here in the UK, my first debut was away at Sheffield Wednesday. And I had a feeling of this is where I need to be and this is where I want to be and this is where I believe I'm good enough to be at the level. How did you feel making your debut? Pretty similar to be fair. I mean, obviously it's, I'm 24 now, um, you know, playing full-time football since I was 16, 17. And it was always the case of, that's why I want to be playing my football. So it's like, well, now you're here, you've got to show people why you deserve to be here or, you know, why you believe it. Um, Obviously it was Villa away, I played there a couple of years ago in the Cup with obviously during Covid so there was no one there so it was a little bit different obviously with 42,000 there and the atmosphere was great and obviously it was a kind of end to end game so listen we got the three points at the end um, and that's all that mattered really yeah. Your brother John, did you say anything? 
Have you missed <laughs> No, he's actually, actually, he came down on, on Tuesday night there just to see me because I've like, not seen him obviously since the World Cup he's been in and I've been in so it was obviously nice to see him and things and yeah obviously he congratulated me and yeah. <laughs> he was a bound to pick him, he didn't come to the World no, Cup, he didn't, he didn't wear a suit of <laughs> no, he didn't, he didn't, no. Got to get that, might that happen, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%, I mean, whatever, if we have a camp in Europe or anywhere in uh, England then hopefully I'll, I'll drag him there and get him to wear the suit of 19 anyway. What's it like when you know a transfer is going to potentially happen? Tell us from the inside, tell like so people can get an understanding. Do you speak to the manager? Do you meet up with him beforehand of that potential new club? Is do you have a discussion on the phone, um, or do you just come and sign and then meet him afterwards? Yeah, um, obviously before the before the medical, um, I spoke to him on the phone. Um, so you had time to pull out if you didn't like him, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was it on camera, um, but no, it's just a, a general chit chat. Um, obviously. We got more formal after the medical and we had a good meeting that night. Um, just kind of what the roles and responsibilities of me as a player is, what he expects as a coach, um, you know, what the history of the club is and what the club expects of, of a player and the, the responsibilities you have as a Leicester player, not just on the pitch but off the pitch as well. Um, and obviously in the, the coming weeks and you know the more I train, the more obviously we get to know each other then we'll go for more tactical side and you know the way we want to play and as, again as an individual and as a team and you know, when we're attacking, defending, pressing. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of information, but yeah, I've, I've taken it on board as much as I can, as, as best I can. Um, and yeah, just can't wait to get going. I get a feeling though, that it's a bit like you're a bit, you're so excited about being here. That conversation with Brendan Rodgers, I mean, you know you're going to sign for the club. It's almost like, yeah, you're really cool, you're acting nice and calm. You get home and you're like a little kid giddy. <laughs> and you're like jumping around, is, is that kind of what it was like? Because you just picture yourself? Yeah, it was obviously when I came in to sign, it was, I was trying to be kind of reserved, but obviously when you come in the place and you see the whole place, it's, um, it's phenomenal. So it was one of them where when I got back in the car, I definitely like a little shout you know. Just, um, yeah, it was, it was a good, obviously, I, was, I live away from here, so it was about, you know, it was a good car journey. It was just a time of kind of reflection over the last, you know, kind of year. Um, Obviously with the injury and my, my brother passing and then obviously having the World Cup and, and then getting the move, it's, it's going to be a hectic year, but you know, it's one that I wouldn't change for the world. January's been a very, very busy month for Leicester City Football Club. They've signed two Matildas and they've signed you here at Leicester. So surely the Aussie fan base is going to go through the roof now. Hopefully the Leicester City have, are selling some more shirts in the show than they, than they were previously, but obviously it's, it's great obviously they're here as well. And obviously with the, with the World Cup coming up later this year, then yeah, it's, it's good for everyone. Have you sent one to John? Because it's blue, right? So it works. It's playing for Rangers. Well, exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean the Royal Blue works. I mean, he I doesn't think, want to wear a yeah. Socceroos jersey <laughs> just yet, we found out, but he's happy to wear a Leicester City shirt. Yeah, I think he was painting his, um, Painting his house all blue and white, so it's, um, he doesn't have to change it now that I've signed here. But um, yeah, obviously it's great. Talk us about your debut against Aston Villa in the Premier League. Um, firstly, it's a derby. It's your first game after a record Australian signing, which is record transfer fee, which is congratulations as well, which is amazing. Thank you. Um, what was that like? How did you feel, firstly, um, in, the, in the tunnel leading out to the pitch? But how, also, how long before did you find out you're playing? Yeah, so I found out obviously the day before we'd done a little bit of shape and stuff. Um, and the manager just pulled me and said, How'd you how'd you feel about starting tomorrow? I said, Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Um, There's that giddy laugh again, so, too. Yeah, I try to keep it cool, but I can't hide it. Um, but yeah, obviously it was it was a great feeling and I think if I was looking at it back, I think obviously the World Cup helped me massively, um, in terms of that kind of stage to play at. Um, and yeah, I was, I was pretty settled in straight away really, obviously, with the, with the, with the own goal after, I think yep. it was 18, 20 minutes or whatever it was. Um, listen, these things happen, I've scored a few own goals um, before, so it's one of them, you can't really let it affect you for the rest of the game. Um, but obviously the boys, boys done well to, to get me out of it in the one four two. so hopefully it gets forgotten. That made it 2-1, right? That made it 2-1, yeah. So to, to how do you feel at yeah. that moment? Because you're thinking, oh, Yeah, so obviously we just got back in the game. Excitement, you're back in the game, yeah. you're playing you just got back in the game, so I'm at the moment. <laughs> Can't see what I was thinking on camera anyway, but I was thinking, well, this is bad. Yeah. Um, but I think we score again very, very shortly after, and we go into half-time leading 3-2. So we're in a great position. We knew at half-time we keep a clean sheet in the second half, we win the game. Um, and that was kind of the focus going into the second half. Um, and we, we get a goal little two goal cushion and it kind of makes the last 20 minutes a little bit more relaxable um, and yeah I absolutely loved it from start to finish I think it was it was a great game it was an end-to-end -end game tempo was was really high um, you know there was a couple of minutes in the second half where 
I was trying to catch a second wind that wasn't coming, but <laughs> I got there in the end, had a wee gel about 75 minutes. Um, but yeah, got through and yeah, it was, it was a great feeling. Yeah, so sitting in the change room, is that it? Is, you, is that where it all comes in, the, the emotions and the realisation? That's my Premier League debut done and we won, yeah. Uh, I scored an own goal, but there's nothing you could have done about it. Yeah, I mean, obviously I got on the phone and got you know text from from my family saying congratulations, and then I got the text through from my friends taking the piss basically about the own goal. So it's a mix, a mix of emotions, but listen, that's what family and friends are yeah. for. So um, yeah, it was like like you said, obviously back in the dressing room, it was kind of my, my whole life to work up to play to play in the Premier League, and you know I managed to do it and to get a small taste of it was, was, was fantastic, but now obviously I've got, got to kick on and, and try and play as many games as I can. So the benefits of when I started, my main mind debut, there was no, te well there was mobile phones around, but people weren't texting each other like they do today, so my debut beat yours in terms of, I made a mistake and we lost the game three, but I don't know if I want to actually claim that one, but anyway, um, and I didn't get any abuse, not to my face anyway, probably behind my back, um, so yeah, no, not great. Uh, so the difference between playing the Championship to the Premier League, how big a gap was that for you? I think it would be unfair to, to, to stand here and say oh, it's a massive gap between the, the quality of the players because there's some fantastic players in the championship. Um, I think the, the, the small difference I noticed and it was like that with the World Cup, it was it can go from, from zero to a hundred so quick. You've got to be so switched on and, and, and everything that you do, you, you know, you can't think, oh, the ball's 30 yards away, I can, I can maybe just get a little breather because there's a runner there coming in behind you, there's a runner there and if you don't do your job, the team's getting punished. Um, so I think that was kind of the small difference, um, and yeah, it was it was like I said, the tempo from from it could go from you know a passing around the back in one ball splits splits the whole the whole um, midfield, and you're you're having to deal with a striker who's dropping in or spinning, and it's just I think the concentration levels have just got to be it was so switched on. Do you play fantasy football? I do. Yeah, I start every season with with my friends. Obviously, we got one. One with a kind of family friend group, um, and I probably give up every October, November when I'm when I'm bottom of the league. But that's changed this time around, right? Because like, surely you've got to fancy yourself in set plays, right? And interestingly, you said off camera, right? How much are you worth on fantasy football? I think it's. I've not checked yet, but I think it's four point four point five mil bargain. <laughs> have you bought yourself? It's a bargain. Yeah, I have. Uh, <laughs> <you> <laughs> so not only after you met Brendan Rodgers and the excitement about signing for, for Leicester City, you've gone in the car and it was, changed it your was, fantasy football team it, straight yeah, away. It was, it was waiting about ten minutes to get a bit of four G. <laughs> and I wasn't checking Twitter or Instagram. It was straight on fantasy. Get me in there. <laughs> He's one of the free transfers. Yeah. And you've got to be a candidate for set plays, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously a lot gets made about my height. Um, well, and, understandably. And, yeah, yeah, evidently. <laughs> um, and yeah, I know I should be scoring more goals um, from my height. It's not as easy as just putting the ball in the box and getting your head on it. I think obviously nowadays with every team's got set piece coaches, they're so well, you know, coached attackingly and defensively. Um, and yeah, listen, it's it's one of them where I know I need to improve it, and um, yeah, I'm sure I will. Hopefully, I get on the end of get on the end of a few before the end of the season. Uh, we talk about Leicester and where Leicester have been over the last couple of years, a lot high up the table. Has that been talked about? Do you know what the goals are between now and the end of the season for the club? Yeah, I think it's pretty simple to finish as high up as possible. Um, obviously, with the with the league position is now it's so tight, um, and again, it's kind of a a strange season if you look at all the teams and where they are. You know, there's a lot of teams that are performing at their skin. There's a few, you know, the so-called bigger clubs not performing as they did a couple of years ago. So it's, you know, it's kind of mix and match. But yeah, listen, the goal for for the team is just to finish as, as high up as the table as possible and as win as many games as we can until the end of the season. And obviously, you know, we're still in the FA Cup, so it's still a trophy to play for, and we're going to do our very best. Have you noticed a big difference in professionalism level day in, day out and the way that things are organised here at the club? Yeah, I think the big thing for me is with, with coming here, as I said before, there's, there's no excuses. Um, everything's done for you uh, or, or there for you to use. So obviously you can see the gym is incredible, it's got everything for you. You've got the, you know, the pool, the, you know, the, the ice baths, the, the saunas, the chiro chambers. You know the amount of staff, the physios you've got. You know it's it's all good for you, and that was one of the one of the things the manager says. I think to, to all the players is you know it's there for you to use it. So if you want to use it, then if you want to get to that top level, then it's it's there for you. Um, and yeah, in terms of you know the professionalism side, um, I think every day I think that's got to be driven by yourself and you know the training standards with everyone else. Um, I think a lot a lot of things to do with professionalism as a youngster is kind of seen 
what the older guys do in the team um, and obviously we've been at Stoke and then the, the national team obviously you know, one of them springs to mind is Matty Ryan so you know, the way he you know, keeps on top of his of his, you know, his, his shape and what he does in the gym and, and seeing it first hand obviously we can only see it for a couple of weeks of time but you know seeing what he you know goes in to prepare not just for a game but for every training session and you know his, what he eats and his diet it's just taking things from that and and trying to make it your own. Um, I think I've kind of got a good balance of where I'm at. Obviously, coming off the back of 12 months off with a, with a knee injury, I've, I've found things that work for me and I spend probably more time in here now than I, than I used to, obviously, before, before my injury, that's for sure. You talk about the facilities at this club. I mean, they are outrageous, let's be honest. I've not seen anything like it. Um, it's a long, long way away from where they used to be when I was here at the club. It's a very different place. Um, how, how good are they? Are they as good as you've ever seen? Oh, yeah. I mean, breaking it down, you're, it's, obviously I've been, only been here a week, but it's like, this is where I'm working every day. It's, it's incredible. It, like, obviously the, the, the pitches, the, everything we've got is, is just first class. I don't think there's, there's, a, there's a better one in, in world football, to be fair. Um, obviously that's not doing a disservice to, to Stoke, because Stoke's training during the game was, in, was incredible, coming from Dun United to Stoke, and it was, it was everything that, that I needed. But, I just think you look around here and you know the money they've spent, they've, they've not missed a trick, they've, they've got everything for the players and staff and yeah, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Have you got lost yet? A few times mate, going up, going up a few different sets of stairs, I've, I've ended up in some wrong rooms that I probably shouldn't have been in. <laughs> <laughs> just popped the head in the same back <laughs> But no, I'll get used to that mate, so um, yeah, no, that's great. I mentioned to you about the professionalism, now that you're in Leicester, you've got the likes of Jamie Vardy, um, Tete, uh, James Madison, uh, Ian Hatcher. What's it like coming up against these guys in the short period of time that you've been here? Yeah, yeah. no, it's great. I think I mean, that's where I want to be is, is playing Premier League football and, and playing against these guys. Obviously, the more I you know train with them and and play with them and training, the you know hopefully the better I'm going to get. So yeah, it's obviously they're they're, they're absolutely you know, great players. Um, you know they're what they can do with the ball at their feet and their movement. You know everyone's a different type of player. You've got obviously Teddy, for instance, who's quite small but technically incredible and in the way he can move with the ball and. And Vardy, obviously, with, the, with his runs in mind and stuff, you've always got to be switched on. So, it's, yeah, it's a great mix, great mix of everything. Um, and, yeah, just, you know, going out to train every day, just absolutely a smile on my face and, and buzzing for it. Have you lumped anyone yet? Body checked anyone yet? <laughs> well, give, me, give me one play you've done so far. No. Maybe a little bit too much. you knocked him off his feet. No, or no, get, get my, fault, my fault was get the feet under the table first. Yes. And then play the first Have you got time at this yet? I mean, no. I, I recommend Vardy. No, I think give everyone, him a everyone, bit of a nudge. Everyone, yeah. everyone, everyone's been pretty nice to me for the first week. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll see Jamie Vardy. Give him a bit because he's a bit loud, right? He's, he's certainly he's certainly one of the louder ones, but he's 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 funny in what he says. Mate. It's, okay. Obviously, there's a few stories and stuff I can't really see on camera, but yeah, he's 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 a, kind of the the one that's kind of gets everyone in the mood and stuff. This and, is your chance, effort. right? Because I'm going to talk to him later on. I'm going to ask him, and he'll give me loads of stuff on you. He'll just make <laughs> them up. He thinks they're all true. <laughs> yeah. Probably, mate. Yeah, probably. Um, but to be fair to him, he's, he's, he only trained last Friday, um, last Thursday, and obviously trained today, and he had a wee niggle um, yeah. with a couple of boys, but yeah, no, he's, he's a good crack anyway, and it's someone that I'm getting to, <laughs> getting to know very well. Harry, we're six weeks on from the World Cup. Has it all sunk in? And where are you are with it right now? Yeah, I think it's I think it's sunk in. Obviously, it took a little bit of time um, because the main you know feeling after leaving it was disappointment with the result against Argentina. Um, couldn't really get that out of my mind for a few weeks, to be honest with you. Um, you know the fact that obviously we took them to the last kick of the game and just so close, but I and think, they go on to win it, right? Yeah, of course. So you know, you, you, I remember we f flew back on the Tuesday and I was watching watching the. I can't remember who was playing on the Wednesday night on my sofa, I think, and I was there two days ago playing, playing do you know what I mean? Um, so it comes a bit so fast, but after, you know, two, two, three weeks of letting that go, I think that, you know, I was speaking to family and my dad, and you'd got to look back and, and be really proud of what we achieved as a squad. Um, you know, what we did for not just the football team, but the, the country as a whole. Um, and you know some of the, the the two results that we had. I mean that 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 night against you know Denmark was the best memory I've got in football. Mate. Just the the feeling, not just for yourself, but to look around, you know, to people that you've been on the whole journey with for four years. You know, to see them as as happy as you are, and just just the overriding emotion of just yeah, just the incredible feeling and knowing that you've done it for them and they've done it for you and. 
see your family and that in the stand and yeah it was it was an emotional night for sure. The hard thing is that people don't realise is that you go from like you said playing in a, in a World Cup knockout round against Argentina who go on to win it but then a week later less than a week later you're playing in the championship mm -hmm. so he's like you don't even get a real chance to even digest it do yeah. you? It does take a long yeah. time. Well my first session back on the Wednesday at Stoke training got delayed for 45 minutes because there was frost and snow on the pitch so <laughs> I went from training in 25 30 degree heat to, to training got delayed with the frost and the snow so that was kind of a welcome back um, but yeah listen it's again I think that's the, the job of a professional football player is to, is to be ready um, and to play and I was never going to miss the, the game against Cardiff and um, obviously if I've been out for so long I want to play every game that I can um, and yeah obviously the manager asked me how do I feel and, and do I want to play and yeah absolutely I was going to play. How big was the news for you as a, as a Socceroo, big part player in the national team, that Graham Arnold's re-signed for another three and a half years next campaign? Yeah, fantastic. I think I know if you ask all the lads, they, they, they feel the same. Um, he called me, um, I think it was kind of a week before the, the press broke. And just and what, asked you if you wanted him as a manager? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just said, uh, <laughs> ah, really. Um, Basically, just said that obviously he was he was going to stay on, he's going to offer, he's going to stay on. I think he said that he spoke to a lot of the lads and, and just explained to them. So yeah, the, the first the, the first feeling was absolutely brilliant um, because I I know all the lads and, and the way we work and, and how much it meant for us just to, not to play for Sherry but to play for him as well. And I think that you've seen that he gets the best out of a lot a lot of lads. Um, and yeah, the, obviously what we've done together as a group is is really great and obviously going forward obviously we've got the Asian Cup and then the next World Cup hopefully um, and yeah it was, it's, it's great more memories and to get as far in the tournaments as possible. I describe the, the Socceroos squad at this World Cup as probably not our best team, sorry not our best group of players mm -hmm. but our best team. Yeah. Is that a fair kind of assumption or a fair analogy um, and also how, how important was that togetherness? I mean I think you know, there's a massive big thing made about obviously the comparison between you know the, the golden generation and I think if you look at on on paper certainly of, of the kind of the leagues and and that they were playing in and that we were playing in that you know there was none of us playing in the top five or maybe one I think he was maybe playing in the top five leagues um, you know compared to the golden generation when there was there was a lot of them so um, I think it was a it was a different kind of probably mindset I mean I think that we knew that we weren't probably as talented I'd say as individually as, yeah individually yeah. but what we did have and what we worked on for three and a half four years was that just collective unit that I'm going to run for the person next to me and he's going to run for me if he makes a mistake I'm there if I make a mistake he's there and I think there were so many examples of that and not just the tournament but the qualifiers the playoffs I think everyone together just a collective thing and it's, it's so hard to get that culture as a team but when you've got it it's some feeling going onto a pitch knowing that you're all working for each other and that you know that everyone's going in the same direction because you know yourself it's so difficult to get that especially in football you know club football when there's I mean not, not everyone's on the same page or whatever but certainly you know as a country we uh, everyone was together and I think we got the, got the best out of it. Because it was very obvious for us because there's no way in the world you could have done what you did unless you were completely together so how do you build on that? Where do, you, where do you go? I think the, yeah. the World Cup was there and yeah. it was amazing. Where do you go now from there? You know, I think there was the overriding feeling was the the disappointment and I think that just fuels the fire for the next for the next campaign. It's got to. Um, you've seen obviously how how well we did against Argentina and, and taking them, you know, to the last kick. That's got to just fuel us, you know, for the Asian Cup coming up for the qualifiers to the next World Cup um, to get that one step further. Um, and yeah, that's that's what we're going to be doing and just can't wait to see the boys again in March because obviously it was after the tournament, the lads kind of splatting you straight back to club land. There was no real time to say, you know, it's been great the last three weeks together. Like I was room, rooming with Riley and he was off on a plane and I was like, <laughs> woke up in the morning, he was gone. I didn't even get him to give him a hug or anything, do you know what I mean? So it was like a breakup, mate. So um, yeah, it'd be great to, great to see all the lads again in March. So you still haven't spoken since the breakup? No, oh, well, he's actually got my free Argentina tops. Mate. Has he? Um, That's so, why he's not returning your calls. Yeah, yeah basically. Honestly, the worst text in the world he is. Um, but yeah, like obviously the next four years, again, obviously with the young lads coming through, um, you know, playing their football, it's, it's great to see a lot of them getting, you know, more minutes um, and playing regular football and obviously Riley being one of them is absolutely flying at the top end of the championship. Um, 
he's still not shut up about his goal that he scored against Blackburn <laughs> <laughs> just seems to score a belt like, every couple of weeks he scores a worldie so yeah no buzzing for him mate. absolutely buzzing for him how proud are you to be first Aussie in two years to be back and playing in the Premier League yeah really proud um, obviously I know there's kind of a, a big deal made of it and and such but yeah hopefully I'm um, it's not going to be another two years before someone else does it as well because you know there's a lot of great, you know good, good lads coming through. Um, obviously, like I said, Riley at the top end of the championship. There's a few others. There's a lot of lads playing in Scotland that I definitely think could, could, could play down here. That's for sure. So um, yeah, I'm sure it'll be in uh, no matter of time before before lads are on. Back to your bread and butter. It's all matter of playing against Tottenham on the weekend. Little Harry Kane, who's he's not a bad player, right? He's done all right. <laughs> he's decent. <laughs> How do you prepare for it? Um, Listen, he's one of the probably the best strikers in the world. Um, obviously, his goal record's you know phenomenal, but I think it's got to be a, a collective unit. I think it's it's not just about stopping him because Tottenham's a great team. It's about stopping the whole team. Um, and if we can do all our jobs right, you know, individually and collectively, then you know we've got to get get the ball to our attacking players who who can really hurt them. I think that's what we've got to focus on. I wish you all the very best, mate. And thank you very thank much. Thank you for coming. Congratulations. Nice one. Cheers. Brilliant. <laughs>